Hey everybody, this week we're going to be working on collages. And collage simply means glue or paste. And so the drawing has a couple different components to it. And you're going to have two weeks to complete this drawing. It's worth 20 points. So it does take um, a considerable amount of time. It's not something that should just be thrown together. And the the assignment has a couple different parts. The, the first thing that I want you to do is fill up eight pages of your sketchbook with different drawings. Doodles can be anything. It could be patterns. It could be a bunch of drawings of cats, a bunch of drawings of dinosaurs. It could just be features of the face. Those are, you know, what I did in the example in the video uh, coming up. And then features of the face can be good because you can kind of manipulate them and rearrange them into different things later on really easily. Um, so it doesn't matter, but fill up eight pages full of drawings. Now, once you got these drawings all finished, basically you're gonna start cutting your drawings up. And you know, all those different dinosaurs or all those different cats that you drew, whatever it is, you just start cutting them up and you're gonna have a pile of different cut up pieces of drawings. Then you're gonna get a magazine or some junk mail or whatever. Junk mail can be good because there's a lot of times there'll be big um, areas of color. Like they'll just be a big red envelope or something like that. Um, and you can cut those shapes out as well and use that kind of like construction paper for big shapes and big areas of color. So you're gonna start cutting up different magazines, cutting up junk mail, wherever you can find images that you're interested in, just start cutting all those things up. And I want you to commit to working six hours on this collage, which would mean two sessions of about three hours each. And of course you can take breaks during that time. Um, but try to commit to two separate sessions. It's, it's better than to do it in two separate sessions than in just one day because it gives a little bit of time to kind of think about where the drawing is and all this sort of stuff. So think about it as something that's done in multiple sessions and you create all your drawings, you're cutting them all up and then you're going to be rearranging them into some new composition. It's going to look weird. It's going to look kind of surreal um, and cubist or strange and you can kind of play on those sort of things as well. Some other good things to have are kind of cartoony elements like hands and these sort of things you know you could look up on your phone like different cartoon hands to draw or different cartoon feet or mouths or whatever and just so you have a bunch of different um, stuff that you can work with is really important um, so you get all this stuff together and then you're just gonna start gluing and I think in the beginning it's good to just glue haphazardly and one good thing to do after you've glued stuff, if you have access to some sort of clear medium, gel medium, that's they sell it at Michael's and these types of stores or your local art store. And or it's also called clear gesso. And if you gesso on top of anything, then you can go on top of it with pen and ink as well. So this is a clear gesso you could put on top. It's not necessary, but it does kind of help the surface and make it a little bit more conducive to drawing. Regardless, doesn't matter if you don't do that step. Start collaging all this stuff together and you're gonna start seeing some things, you know, like when you look at clouds and you start seeing a cloud and it starts to look like a lion or something like that. You're gonna start seeing that in your drawing, like, oh, this person could be developed a little bit more or, oh, maybe I can put a tree back here or whatever. Um, so start playing with that surface and this is a this is an assignment where play is really, really important. And I think for that reason, this stuff will look kind of more childlike. And that's okay for these these things to come out looking rather childlike and crude. Um, another fun thing to do would be to contrast, you know, maybe do one page of realistic drawings and then one page of really scribbly drawings or something like that. And then you could contrast styles. Um, don't be afraid to use your watercolors. I use my watercolors in my example as well. If you have any gesso, just white or white paint, that can be really good to just, you know, go on top of your collage at a certain point and just paint on top of it, let that dry, and then start drawing in that um, on that white area of that new section. But think about this drawing as something you can destroy as you're making it. 
and hopefully you end up with something cool at the end of six hours. So check out the video that's coming up and you can kind of see my process and what I did. I ended up working on top of an old album cover. So these things are really accessible. You can get them at Goodwill or whatever, usually for just a dollar or two dollars. And oftentimes local uh, record shops will have a box just full of free old LPs that nobody cares about. But these album covers are really good to work on because it's kind of a cardboard like surface. It's a little bit stiffer. And when the record's inside of it, it's kind of stiff and hard and you can push on it and mess with it a little bit more. So I like working on these album covers and students that have used these album covers in the past uh, have really enjoyed working with them as well. So let's get on with it. Let's just have fun and see what happens if you can commit yourself to that six hours of just constantly reworking and changing and maybe this eye is going to be big and maybe this eye is going to be smaller. And it's just about that feeling of drawing, you know, like where you're looking at a cloud and making out what is that, you know? So it's that creativity in drawing. This is a lot of drawing from our heads, which is totally different than what we were doing for much of the semester. But of course, in those eight preliminary drawings, you can do those from life too. Or you can look up stuff on your phone, eyes and mouths and stuff like that. So have fun with this one. And don't worry if it looks weird. It should look a little bit weird. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of the point of it, to, to just play and draw and get a lot of practice drawing while you're, while you're making this one. So when you start off with this one, it can be good to just literally just make a mark, make a splotch of ink, and then start making up some imagery from that splotch of ink. The main thing with this beginning stages is just to get those eight pieces of paper full of different stuff. You can even start collaging like I did here um, in the beginning stages. And just have fun with these. Do them fast. Um, just 10 minutes, 15 minutes for each page maybe. Um, then I started just making a bunch of eyes. I started looking at different cartoon eyes and just drew a bunch of eyes with a dip pen, knowing that later on we can cut out these eyes and rearrange them into different configurations. And eyes are always just, you know, a good thing to have in terms of collaging stuff. They can be easily put and, um, create people or create creatures, these sort of things. After that, I started just doing a bunch of mouths because I figured, you know, if I have eyes, I might as well have a bunch of mouths. So I made a bunch of different mouths, some with their tongues sticking out, some are fast, some are slow, uh, playing around with line variation and that sort of thing. Then I just made a whole one full of patterns. Then here I just made a typical collage. Um, after that, I made another collage, made it all messy, and that was another page. Here's another quick drawing, super splattery and done very, very quickly. There's my LP. Now I've got all these pieces cut out and I just start gluing them down with my glue stick and gluing and drawing, gluing and drawing. That's pretty much where we're going from here. I cut out a bunch of my eyes and put them all over the place for some unknown reason, but that'll get covered up as we go along. And that's part of this whole assignment is to really start using this as a playtime where you can commit to that time, like I said, and see what happens within that time frame. Uh, as I go along, I'm starting to put in that big patterned background area. You can see everything got a little bit grayer. That's when I put that clear medium or clear gesso on top of everything. And that just kind of sticks everything together. It's kind of like those puzzle savers, if you've ever used those things. It's like a sticky medium that you can put on top of stuff. But it's easy to draw on top of it after that. This cat, this blue cat, kind of popped out of nowhere in the, the bottom portion. And this kind of waddling woman uh, on the left side. This is day two. And I just, when I came in day two, that's why it's kind of fun to, to wait a day and get back into this assignment. On day two, I just put white on top of a bunch of areas and I was like, this is just too, too messy. And so I started making some more clear cut character type shapes and more cartoony looking images. 
Uh, playing with pattern in, in this stage can also be fun. Just making like different patterns or fish scales or these sort of things, filling certain areas full of pattern. You can see in the top left, I pulled off his uh, his name again, and it kind of looked like this effect, like his name is coming through the paper. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, at this stage, you're just basically, you keep looking, keep looking, what can change? Now I'm putting some uh, green, I found this magazine just full of a bunch of different pictures of gardens in it, and so I just cut up a bunch of those gardens and put this landscape like texture going throughout the entire collage there and then going back with black trying to find shapes trying to figure these shapes out see how they work turn that what is now a, a person there with the that is petting the cat with one hand and their hand is uh, kind of holding on to the person next to them as well I thought I was going to make that guy into full guy, but then I was like, no, I'm just going to give him this like wide mouth sort of thing here. And I just use watercolors to tint that bottom col part a little bit, um, that color as well. So in the end, I went a little bit crazy with the, uh, the glitter. For some reason, I was like, oh, I have glitter. I should just use glitter. And so I just started dumping glitter on stuff. Got this snake, this red snake I put throughout the whole thing um, to just tie it all together. Really tied the room together, you know. And then I popped some eyeballs on it in the end. So have fun with this one.